Scleroderma is a unique autoimmune condition that can affect many parts of the body, including the skin, lungs, and the digestive tract. Scleroderma is different from many other autoimmune conditions in that its symptoms are often the result of fibrosis in our tissues, not inflammation. When talking about the digestive system, we often think of our stomach or intestines, but it also includes our mouth and esophagus, and that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about all the ways scleroderma can affect our mouth, our dental health, and our esophagus, and what we can do about it. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. So I have another video where I get into what scleroderma, otherwise known as systemic sclerosis, what it is. And I'll put that link in the description box. But briefly, systemic sclerosis is an autoimmune disease that can lead to skin changes, joint pain, and lung problems, all due to fibrosis. Fibrosis simply means scar tissue, and this occurs as a result of an autoimmune reaction. There are multiple types of systemic sclerosis, but the two main types are limited systemic sclerosis, otherwise known as Crest syndrome, or diffuse systemic sclerosis. And the words limited and diffuse simply correspond to how much of the skin is involved. Both, however, can affect the mouth and esophagus. When it comes to the mouth, scleroderma can create a unique set of challenges. Just like on the hands, forearms, and chest, the skin around the mouth can tighten, making it difficult to fully close your lips, which can lead to mouth dryness. In addition, those with scleroderma can have secondary Sjogren's. Sjogren's is an autoimmune condition that often accompanies other autoimmune conditions, and when it does, we call it secondary Sjogren's. And it leads to dry eyes and dry mouth as the condition decreases our ability to produce saliva and tears. I've got more on that in the description box as well. Saliva acts as a natural cleanser in our mouths, so when it's reduced, plaque and bacteria can build up. On top of that, saliva helps with swallowing, so without it, many people can have difficulty getting food down, and they'll describe feeling like food gets stuck in their throat. So between the skin tightening around the mouth and secondary Sjogren's, everyone with scleroderma will need a dental health strategy. You see, a dry mouth isn't just uncomfortable, it can lead to bigger problems like tooth decay and gum disease. So what can we do? Well, first of all, you want to prioritize your your regular dental visits. You're going to want to be completely open with your dentist regarding your scleroderma and may even need to find a dental specialist familiar with this condition. Letting them know is super important as they may need to adjust their approach to your care, whether it's by scheduling longer appointments or using smaller instruments. Finding a dentist with scleroderma experience will also be helpful because you may need specialized recommendations for your toothpaste and toothbrushes. Depending on your situation, you may need a toothbrush with a longer handle or a smaller head and you may need specialized toothpaste for sensitive mouths. And these types of recommendations are not always known by your rheumatologist unless you happen to be at a specialized scleroderma center. Reversing the skin changes in scleroderma is an active area of research within rheumatology, but we have yet to crack the code. So our current treatments aren't great at significantly improving skin tightening. When it comes to the skin around the mouth, however, there are some facial exercises that you can do to help maintain flexibility. I've included a link to a great handout that has some gentle stretches you can do on your own. It may also be worthwhile to ask your doctor for a referral to either a physical or occupational therapist to work with on maintaining mouth and jaw function. Similar to anyone with Sjogren's, you want to have all the tools available to keep your mouth as hydrated as possible. That means drinking plenty of water, chewing sugar-free gum, or using products like biotin. In some cases, prescription medications can be used to stimulate saliva production, and if you've tried all the things and are still having trouble, ask your doctor if a prescription for pilocarpine or a similar medication is a good choice for you. Now let's move on to the esophagus, which is more than just a tube that connects our mouths to our stomachs, although that's kind of actually what it is. The esophagus is a muscular tube that helps move food from the mouth down to the stomach. The esophageal muscles work together to move the food down in a smooth, rhythmic pattern. 
The bottom of our esophagus, we have a valve that opens and closes to allow food in the stomach, but keep the stomach acid out of our esophagus. However, with scleroderma, that same fibrosis that affects our skin can affect the smooth muscles in the lower half of our esophagus and that valve. Just as we can see with our skin, the fibrosis in our esophagus can lead to the tissue becoming hardened and thickened, and the muscles now don't work as well at moving the food down. This can lead to a feeling of food getting stuck in our throats or our chest. And yes, the feeling can still be in our throats, even though the problem is further down, and I'm gonna talk about that later. You might also experience heartburn or acid reflux, as more stomach acid is now able to escape the stomach and get into the esophagus. This can feel like a sour taste in our mouth, chest pain, or even frequent burping. If left untreated, the acid reflux can irritate the lining of the esophagus, causing it to narrow. We call those strictures. These make swallowing even more difficult. Similar to the issues in the mouth, these changes aren't just uncomfortable, they can have serious implications. Unchecked acid reflux can lead to tiny amounts of acid and stomach contents getting into the lungs. Over time, this can lead to significant lung problems, further complicating anyone with scleroderma's health. But there are things we can do. First of all, you want to adjust your meals so you're eating smaller, more frequent meals. This will ease the pressure on the esophagus and decrease the chance of food getting stuck. Drinking plenty of water with meals can also help move food down smoothly. Because the esophageal valve doesn't work at 100%, we want to use gravity to keep stomach acid in our stomach. So at night, try elevating the head of your bed to keep stomach acid from creeping back up while you sleep. You can do this with a wedge pillow or even propping up the head of the bed with cinder blocks. We also have medications that help to decrease the overall acid your stomach produces. Ask your doctor if a proton pump inhibitor or a PPI or an H2 blocker is needed. Sometimes a combination of these medications may be needed in order to control your acid. And then in some cases, we will rely on our GI or surgeon colleagues for help. GI docs can perform a dilation where they gently open a narrowed esophagus and surgeons can perform a number of different procedures to rearrange the anatomy so we can maintain function of the entire system. These procedures are usually for those where other treatments haven't been affected or if someone's disease has progressed. If you've been taking your medication but still feel like you can't eat comfortably, your acid reflux is not responding to treatment or you are noticing new breathing problems like a chronic cough or wheezing or you're getting short of breath, Ask your doctor if it's time to see a specialist, whether that's a GI or lung specialist. I wanna highlight one symptom that if you were paying attention, you would have realized could be the main clue that something needs to be looked into. And that is the feeling of food getting stuck in our throats. The sensation of food getting stuck can seem like well, food must be getting stuck exactly where I feel it, which is usually high in our throats. But the sensation can be misleading, and even problems down in our lower esophagus can lead to this feeling. What this means for you is that if you are having this sensation, you and your doctor need to keep an open mind regarding where you go looking for problems and shouldn't make any assumptions. Given how common acid reflux is with systemic sclerosis, if you start having this symptom, it makes sense with just starting an acid reducer medication, changing your meals, and elevating your bed. Also, keeping your mouth hydrated and seeing your dentist is just always a good idea. But if you were doing these things and the sensation is still not improved, it's worth asking your doctor if y'all need to do more testing to look at the lower esophagus. There are tests we can do to evaluate the function of your esophagus and see if there's any narrowing. Knowing exactly what is going on will make it more clear to you and your doctors what the next best steps are. Managing scleroderma's impact on the mouth and esophagus requires a combination of good oral care, dietary adjustments, and in some cases, medical interventions. Every case is different, but the one thing every case requires is good communication with your doctor. When dealing with a condition like scleroderma, there is no room for assumptions or vagueness. We must have honest, open conversations. If you are just starting out your journey or even been at this for a while but want to strengthen your relationship with your doctor, I highly recommend downloading my free appointment home run handbook. It was specifically built to help you get organized, think about what you've been through up until now, and then communicate that to your doctor.
I'll put the link in the description box. We got into a lot of details about scleroderma, but if you want to learn more about the basics, I highly recommend checking out this video on scleroderma here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.